Hi, my name is Kate Decker. In this presentation, I will be discussing the long claw adaptation of sloths, but more specifically, those of two-toed sloths. I hope that you enjoy. As an introduction to sloths, I will be going back in time to more than 10,000 years ago. Previous ancestors of sloths were believed to be massive in size and were even compared to that of adult elephants. They primarily resided in what is now the United States, and because of their massive size, they walked on land and reached for food off of trees. Today, however, sloths are notorious for their smaller size and incredibly slow speed. An average present-day sloth is approximately two and a half feet long, and they spend most of their time sleeping and hanging from trees. They live in the rainforests of Central and South America, and are divided into two separate categories, three-toed and two-toed sloths. The general scientific name for all sloths is Folivora, and are made up of the Clopus hofamani and the Clopus didactylus. Two-toed sloths are typically longer in length and different fur coat colors, including a rougher texture. As I mentioned previously, sloths are incredibly slow and travel at a top speed of a 15th of a mile per hour. In addition to this and their lack of proper vision, they aren't good competitors against predators. Since they aren't capable of running away, they may either fight back or have a good place to hide. They typically stay in trees and hang upside down for hours at a time, which calls for a good grip so that they don't fall onto the ground when predators are at watch. While incredibly overlooked, one of the most essential components of a sloth is its long and curved claws. While both three-toed and two-toed sloths have three toes on each of their hind claws, Two-toed sloths have two toes on each of their front claws. For unknown reasons, two-toed sloths tend to have a slightly longer claws at around three to four inches long, which takes up approximately a fifth of its entire body length. Attached to its forelimbs, these claws are incredibly strong and durable as they are made of a thick distal phalange bone. The bones are covered in keratin, which is a type of protein that surrounds parts of the body and protects its tissues. To recall, keratin is also found in human hair, fingernails, and certain organs. Since the claws of sloths are a physical component that aids them for survival, this advantage serves as a physical adaptation. This isn't a physiological adaptation because the length and strength of the claws doesn't change with time or seasons. And it isn't behavioral either, because it isn't a change in decisions, but rather just a physical change. The extreme curvature of the claw allows the two-toed sloth to grip onto trees and serve as a secure hook. This allows them to stay hanging for extremely long periods of time. These claws are also incredibly sharp, which can aid them in self-defense and prevent slippage from the tall trees. But why does this matter to a sloth? The answer is survival. Since the claws allow these sloths to stay in trees for long periods of time, they are typically safer from land predators, such as jaguars. They are safer from eagles as well, because staying in a tree allows them to blend in with their environment with the color of their fur, which is another physical adaptation of theirs. And, as already mentioned, the sharpness of the claws can serve as a major weapon if self-defense is needed. In other words, these claws save sloths. Because of how incredibly beneficial these long claws are, the question of sloth evolution is proposed. Here is a likely scenario in how sloths evolved. First, many different types of sloths, or whichever species they evolved from, could have existed with different sizes of claws. Some would have very small and weak ones, while others had longer and stronger ones. Those that had smaller claws couldn't properly hang from trees as well as the others, and therefore lived on land and were more vulnerable to predators. This process of natural selection occurs, 
where those with smaller claws die off, and those with longer claws have the better phenotype for its niche, the long size of their claw. There is a change in the frequency of alleles in the next generation, with more sloths having longer claws. As more and more generations are created and interbreeding continues to occur, there comes a point where only sloths with long claws exist. This concludes my presentation. Here are my references, and thank you for watching.